Hey guys, welcome back today to another video. Now today, we're gonna to be taking a look at transfer deadline day. Transfer deadline day is around the corner. We've already had the busiest window in the Premier League in terms of money that's been spent. The two Manchester clubs currently leading the way. Arsenal have just spent a little bit of money as well. Arsene Wenger announced it, but didn't announce it, if that makes sense, the Mustafi signing and the striker. I can't remember his name, but those look like they're gonna go through. Chelsea, still a lot of talk about which players they're gonna to buy today. I'm going to be talking you guys through 10 transfers that could potentially happen before deadline day. So without any further ado, I'm going to do the three players that are heavily linked with Chelsea first. Obviously, Chelsea is my club and I'm going to do my like weekend match review in tomorrow's video. And yeah, James Rodriguez to Chelsea. Now, I don't really think this holds any substance. A lot of these transfers are all paper talk. However, a lot of the clubs that these players are being linked with have got to really make some signings before the window is over, in my opinion. Now, James Rodriguez to Chelsea. I went to the Chelsea game yesterday. Even though James Rodriguez would fit into that team somewhere, the way that Oscar started the season, the way that Willian started the season, Hazard, Kanti is now the man in front of the defence. Fabregas can't even get a look in. Where would James Rodriguez come and fit into that Chelsea midfield? I don't think this one's going to happen. I think it is too big of a transfer for there to not be any solid conversations between the clubs have already been leaked to the press so this one isn't going to happen however it will be quite exciting to see James Rodriguez he'd definitely be a shirt seller at Chelsea but where would he fit into that midfield right now now the next transfer is Rob Agnoli from AC Milan to Chelsea now that the club's already in talks Chelsea have made it very clear that they want to buy another centre-back and uh, I don't know if you guys saw Rob Agnoli's like save with his hand against Napoli I mean, we need that in the team. We do need that in the team. Hopefully we won't be losing 4-2 any time this season. I think Milan were 4-2 down at the time. But he would be a very good player. Again, at this stage in the transfer window, when clubs don't have the time to go and replace the players they're, being, they're selling, it's going to be an extortionate transfer fee. I'm hearing like £40 million or something daft. But he's a decent centre-back. He's quite young. And I think he'd be a good signing for Chelsea. The third one and the final one that has been linked with Chelsea. I wasn't going to try and make this video all about Chelsea, but they are the club that seem to want to spend the most money still. Cooley Barley. Now, 60 million is what I've been hearing for a centre back. 60 million pounds. I mean, John Stones for near on 50 million is a bit of a travesty after the season he had. That is the price you pay for English talent, young talent these days. Cooley Barley. I mean, when I think about this transfer and when I think about the player, I just think of Mangala to Man City. 32 million. I know 60 million is a little bit of a different ball game to 32, but. I mean, has Mangala really justified 32 million to Man City? Even though he's still yet to have enough game time, he's not even a first choice centre back at City. 32 million. Cooley Barley, yes, John Terry's a bit older. I think Kurt Zuma's our best centre back. Is, is Cooley Barley going to play 38 games a season and justify 60 million? I just, a lot of the transfers that are linked with Chelsea, the sums of money are just too much for me to get excited because there's always that back of my mind that 60 million. I mean, that could buy you, I don't know what that can buy you. I, I don't even understand the transfer market anymore. It, it's screwed up. But yeah, those three players have been heavily linked with Chelsea. I think two of them may happen. I think the defenders might happen, but uh, Rodriguez isn't coming. Now this transfer is one that has been talked about very recently. Real Madrid apparently have got to get rid of some players before the end of the transfer window. And Isco is a player that I rate very highly and this transfer would be quite difficult as a Chelsea fan because Isco is one of my favourite Real Madrid players and he's been heavily linked with Spurs. Now this is paper talk, but I think what a signing that could be for Tottenham and I don't think it would be extortionate in terms of the transfer fee compared to some of the ones I've just mentioned about Chelsea. I don't think it'd be 60 million if it was to happen. So Isco to Tottenham, do you think that would be a good signing for Spurs? Do you think it could happen? Let me know in the comments down below. Down below. Down below. Now this one, number five, Joe Hart to Everton. He's been heavily linked with a few clubs in Serie A. He's been heavily linked with a load of clubs in Europe because Joe Hart is still a world-class goalkeeper. I was the first to jump on his back at the Euros. Not good enough for me, too arrogant for me as well, but he's still a world-class goalkeeper. I feel a bit sorry for him at Man City because he's been there since the start of the whole money revolution. So he's been the main man and obviously the City fans love him. He loves Manchester City. Guardiola's came in and basically just put Willy Caballero as Man City's number one. They've now signed Bravo, which means that if Joe Hart wasn't number one with Caballero there, he's probably now number three in terms of the pecking order after they've signed Bravo from Barcelona. So Joe Hart, I expect him to leave. I think that's pretty much a 90% done deal that he's leaving. Everton, 
what a signing that would be for them. That would be one of the bargains of the window. But um, yeah, I think he's probably going to end up going somewhere else. But Everton, if you haven't yet gone in for Joe Hart, why haven't you gone in for Joe Hart? You should go in for Joe Hart. The next one is a player that did play in the Premier League before. Steven Nzonzi, apparently Leicester, are interested in buying Nzonzi, probably for Kante's replacement. I think it's clear to see from the first few games of the season that Leicester are really going to miss Kante. Anyone who had such a pivotal role in a title winning season that was a bit of a shock to everybody, that is big boots to fill. Now, Nzonzi wouldn't come cheap, 25 million. They sold Kante for 32 million. Do I think that that signing is in terms of money value player quality, do I think that is a replacement for Kante for the price they're paying? No, because Kante's had a great start to his career at Chelsea. Maybe he could have been sent off against West Ham. He was brilliant yesterday against Burnley. I'll go into that more in tomorrow's match review weekend video. But um, yeah, and Zonzi to Leicester, I think this one has definitely got some substance. The papers are all talking about it. 25 million, don't know, don't know what I think about that, but he's obviously been a lot better at Sevilla than he was at Blackburn back in the day. It could be a good signing for Leicester. Now the next one is a championship player who wants a 35 million pound move to Real Madrid. Musa Sissoko. Now we're talking about Isco being sold to Tottenham. <laughs> Why would Musa Sissoko be signed to Real Madrid? I'm sorry Musa, I know you're probably not watching my video, you're definitely not watching my video. You, you're not a Real Madrid player mate. And a lot of people are saying now Juventus are in for Musa Sissoko. A player who on his day is absolutely brilliant. I think there was a couple of games for France in the Euros where Sissoko was one of the best players. He even made Pogba look as if, well, who, who should be the world record transfer signing, but no. On a serious note, Sissoko doesn't play well often enough to be able to warrant a move to Real Madrid. Juventus, it surprises me a little bit, but at the same time, they bid 15 million apparently, and uh, I don't think Newcastle are gonna settle for anything less than like 25, 30 perhaps. So I think he's probably gonna leave because I think that in terms of the championship, he probably is too good for the championship. But it's the same thing that I said a moment ago. You never know what you're going to get. Is he going to turn up or not? If he does, he's going to be great. If he doesn't, well, it's not too much of a surprise. But Sissoko to Juve. Now, the next one is Sacco to Stoke. There seemed to be a bit of a rift in the summer between Sacco and Jurgen Klopp. Sacco seems to want to leave. I think this move to Stoke would probably be on loan again. It's all paper talk. But I feel as though this one has got some substance. Matip came in for Liverpool. Looked pretty decent against Spurs. So Sacco is no longer the first choice. And I think for Stoke, it would be a good signing. Now we're talking about someone leaving Liverpool. We're talking about someone coming into Liverpool. Dortmund midfielder Pulisic, I think his name is. I've heard that this deal is pretty much not going to happen, but it has been talked about. And I think obviously Jurgen Klopp, he's got the Dortmund link. It would be a player that Liverpool would be interested in signing. Now, so far this season, four points from three games doesn't tell me that Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool are going to be title challengers. Now I said after week one when they beat Arsenal, that they would be right up there if they played like they did for the 20 minutes in which they dominated Arsenal. It's looking as though other teams are much further ahead of them in terms of development, in terms of quality of players, and in terms of results so far. Pulisic, is he gonna be a player to take Liverpool from being that team that are gonna challenge from the top four to the title? Who knows, probably not. But uh, I don't think this transfer's gonna happen, but it's one that's been talked about a lot. And the final one, I'll be completely honest, I sort of needed a 10th transfer. And the papers have talked about this one pretty much every other day when they needed to sell some headlines. Gareth Bale to Manchester United. Apparently Man United want to offer Bale a trial. What, what, what even does that mean? What, why do we read the newspapers? Why have I read the newspapers and made this video about top 10 potential transfer deadline day transfers? Bale to Man United. I mean, I will eat my toenails if, if Gareth Bale signs for Man United before the end of the transfer window. United have won three games out of three. I'm just trying to defend my whole Chelsea can win the league thing by saying United don't need Gareth Bale because if they bought Bale, we may as well just wrap the trophy in red ribbons now because they already look good and Gareth Bale would just be silly. But yeah, that transfer isn't gonna happen. I will look like a tit if Bale signs for Man United now. Obviously United fans would love to see Bale at Old Trafford and I think the Premier League would welcome Gareth Bale back with open arms. So I don't think this one's gonna happen, but those are some transfers that could potentially go through before transfer deadline day. It's been a crazy summer of transfers and we've now finished August football. But yeah, August is over. We're already getting a little look at how the Premier League is gonna shape up. We've already got some front runners and a couple of teams that have surprised a few people. If you wanna watch my video tomorrow, I'll go over that in a bit more detail. But anyway, thumbs up on the video if you did enjoy it. And the Wembley Cup is less than a week away. So I'm gonna to head to the gym now. And I've also got a couple of football videos coming out this week. A five-a-side game that I'm playing on Wednesday. You guys will see that on Thursday. 
And if the weather's good, I'm going to try and record another football video before the Wembley Cup on Friday. If you haven't got tickets yet, link is in the description. I'm excited for that game. I'm also very nervous. I'm very unfit, so I'm going to the gym. Bye.